really appreciate you joining us. And when you have a moment, why don't you check out our sister station, Heart Over Ego Radio, where we offer a lineup of shows that are guaranteed to raise your vibrations and guide you into your best life. We offer shows on Sundays, Everyday Psychic Radio, Mondays, The Alchemy Sisters, Tuesdays, Radical Spirituality, and on Wednesdays, All for One is Love. And then we close out the week on Fridays with Rain Radio. Amazing shows produced for you five days a week, only on Blog Talk Radio. That's right, it's our sister station, Heart Over Ego Radio. Welcome back, everybody. This is Downward Dogma. Topic for today is freedom. And if you want to hear any of our archived episodes, you would just go to any major podcast app and search Third Eye Political Radio. We have about five shows a week, ranging in style. So check them out. You'll find something you like. And um, Sarah and Tasha, um, we have about 15 minutes left, and we covered freedom. Is there anything else that you guys want to get into today? Anything coming to to your mind? Anything um, you want to set on the table to discuss? Tasha, anything in particular? Um, no. Okay. We create our own reality. <laughs> I love that one. And that's, let's talk about that just for a moment, and then we'll hand it over to Sarah. Um, in some of my practices and some of my treatments and sessions that I do with people, I really try to put the ball in their court because once you take responsibility and the reins, you can – you steer your way a lot better. Do you have control over everything? But you have control over a lot. And there's this idea that everything's fated and destined. And if it's supposed to be, it'll be. And then that gets people excuses to not put any effort in, which I think is ridiculous. What I try to show people is if you want to manifest your best reality, it's strategic, it's thought-oriented, and you have to back it up with physicalness. So this could be actually pounding the pavement or doing something on the computer, putting in resume, something like this. We live in a three-dimensional existence where in order to manifest, it's a lot of work. You can see that because telepathy isn't as popular as it could be in, like it is in other dimensions. It's a heavier gravity, and Tasha was talking about that. The level of ego makes this gravity a bit more heavy, a bit more difficult to move through, um, but an old soul likes a, a challenge. And so um, if you want to manifest something, take the reins. Very commonly, I get known as a psychic. It's a title that I even don't mind going by. I have other ones that I prefer, but I'll go by psychic because I use more than my natural senses. I'm into the ethers half of the time. Um, But because people hear that I'm a psychic, number one question, when am I going to get married? Now, they've seen all the movies. They think that I'm going to be able to rattle off some date and time and the guy's going to have purple hair and blue eyes and give them all the details. And I have to break it to them. And I love breaking it to them because it starts to give them something to chew on, which is, I can't tell you who your husband's going to be. Are you dating, first of all? Because if you're not dating, it's a little difficult to run across people. Yes, it's a big world, and you can just randomly run across people, but putting effort into it is going to be everything. And they're like, oh, I thought I was going to be a lot more mystical answer. And I'm like, sorry, I'm way practical. This is how things are done. And it's not a whim- as whimsical as people or as mystical as people like to think. There's a lot of uh, movement involved. So if you want to manifest, take the reins and develop it and move toward it. And if it takes a long time and you get sick of it, just know that's your ego trying to get you to quit. (laughs) And if you really love something and you bring in that passion we were talking about, that will keep the fire burning in your belly to get you through the difficulties that you will, it's not if, it's when you run across them because there are difficulties. Sarah, is there anything in particular you got on your mind you want to bring to the table? Yeah, I actually, Really, 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 I'm personally very passionate about this topic. I think this is probably a very common, I, I hate throwing around the word, the term light worker, but if someone's got a, mm-hmm. a, a better word, like, feel yeah. free to let me know. I'm still very new to this community. But in general, I think uh, it's a very common topic because there's so much dogma to be um, unpacked because we've been living for hundreds and hundreds of years with this 
Christian bullshit where it's like, mm-hmm. it's all Justin, God, you know, you know, if you feel, you know, put your shit in God, God, God's got your back. It's all, you know, destiny, blah, blah, blah. Um, which when in reality, your reality, as Tasha said, like you, you're creating that, whether it's, you know, on purpose or not. But if you want to change that reality, the very first thing you have to do is you have to set that intention in your mind as to what you want that reality to do, to be, right? Like see it crystal clear, feel it, smell it. What, who are you in that reality? Because you have to become that person and then, you know, do the work. You, you actually have to do the work, like you said. Like you have to actually take steps in that direction. Nothing's going to be given to you. You know, you operate in the frequency of that, that reality that you're, you're destined for and that you're trying to create. Um, and that's such a hard thing. Like that right there is a life lesson. Like you could spend an entire <laughs> lifetime yep. just tackling that one lesson, right? So it's like create your own reality. It's such a simple thing. Like you should almost wear a T-shirt with it because it's like just this little tiny little thing. That it's like, oh, yeah, I hear it all the time. You just create your own reality. Go out and do it. It's like, yeah, but, but wow. Like there's so much like life learning that goes into that. It's, it's, a, it's a practice. It truly is something that you, you have to like. But then once you do, you're fucking magic. Yeah. Yep. And you get better at it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you get better at it. And the yeah. next thing you manifest, you, you kill it even better, so to speak. I'm kidding. But like, then you get better and better, and then you become a master, and you can do it more often. And, again, have a nice control over your existence. Again, there's happenstance, and there's surprises, and there's all kinds of things that can pop in the way. But for the most part, you can Dear it. And isn't it funny? And I find it so curious. I don't. It's not curious at all. I can see exactly <laughs> why they did it. But isn't it funny how religious people are very commonly the ones like, Jesus, take the wheel. It's in God's hands. He'll handle it. And I think it's interesting that, and I'm sure all people do it, but I definitely see it with the religious community um, being taught that it's all in God's hands, which probably is just a manipulation tool because if you have people believing that God will take care of them and everything will be fine. They just keep on this mediocre existence without expanding and out creating and manifesting. How interesting that the church wants to keep us down. <laughs> right. oh, I love that you said that. I, mean, I love that you said that because one of the biggest things that I've learned is that our, our default responses are, if it's meant to be, it'll be, you know, mm-hmm. Jesus takes the wheel, whatever it is. Right. Like, um, you, you, but what we really should be encouraging people to do Sit with it. Mm-hmm. Sit with that feeling. Like, let it resonate with you because you will just, you'll never truly learn the lesson you're intended to learn if you just brush it off as if it's nothing. Like, you're meant to cry. You're meant to, like, get it all out. You're meant to feel that because that's what gives you the power to kind of funnel into that manifestation of whatever it is that's next. You know, they have a term for that, and Tasha, I'll hand it over to you in just one second, but. Um, spiritual bypassing, which is kind of skating around the tough stuff and avoiding it. And you've heard of also dark night of the soul. Well, that will put you right in the middle of it. So you might as well start hacking away at it so you don't fall square into it for a year and a half. I tease. It's not that intense yeah. mostly. But the, um, the idea is to um, not pass it off, pass the buck. Um, if you had a rough day, set it down, start again tomorrow. We don't have to pass it all off. One of my favorite artists, he happens to be a graffiti artist, Banksy, he's quoted to say, um, we need to learn how to rest and not quit. And that just really resonated with me because often in this capitalist existence, we're pushed to go, 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 go. And when we break, we say, oh, it must not be meant to be. No, (laughs) you have to go, rest, go, rest, go, rest. The ebb and flow of it all. We're humans. That's just how it goes, this this, uh, dimension. But um, one of my favorite artists, if you don't know Banksy's work um, and talk about revolutionary He's cool. You have to check out his stuff. There's a, something on Netflix where it used to be called Exit Through the Gift Shop. But Tasha, do you want to end us off here? We only got a couple minutes. I want to let you have a time to talk. Yeah, I'll just say that whatever I said the planet was trapped um, for a reason that I'm going to explain. Faith. Mm-hmm. Okay, faith is part of manifestation. It's the word, the root word in the Bible for faith is that you are believe that something already exists even though you haven't seen it yet. And that is, you know, that's part of manifestation. You have to put the full faith in the surrender that it already exists. So when religion and things like that were created, 
they knew that this was a spiritual part of us. This was a part of the way that we work the spiritual beings. And so they took it and they twisted it and they trapped it so that now you have a bunch of people that, you know, have given the power of their manifestation away to some outside force. Mm -hmm. So that's the type of thing that I mean with traps because that's all programmed way of thinking and giving your power away. And if you're constantly giving your power away, well, then you're not a free individual to do or go anywhere that you want. And we are free individuals. Like we are all equally sovereign. So um, the only thing I'd say with, you know, creating our own reality is how important your intention is and being really, really clear on what your intention is because we do manifest whether we're doing it consciously or subconsciously. And we go through different, like a lot of people have um, a lot of teaching and uh, what is it called? Ah, no, I can't think of it. So anyways, I'm not going to say it. Um, anyways, you got to get really clear on your intention. If you want to manifest money, but you want it for like egoic reasons, then those kind of manifestations can backfire on you. And that would be in order for like if your soul evolution is to get and manifest certain ways of being, then you need to make sure you're on course and not working in an egoic sense trying to manifest something that is actually going to be your polarity. Because, um, yeah, we subconscious or consciously, choices are super, super important. I bet our politicians are going to have to answer to their higher selves when they get to the non-physical. Like, hey, you went into public service to be of public service, not become a millionaire, multi, multi, multi multi-billionaire and be an egomaniac. So it's all very interesting. And I love talking with you ladies. And I love how we cover so many things and we let it stretch and expand. And I hope everyone else enjoys it too. And I, Um, Just want to tell everyone, this is Downward Dogma. We're here on Tuesday. It's 2 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We go for an hour. If you have any ideas of things you want to hear us talk about or explain or dissect or unravel, go ahead and email us at heartoverego at gmail. We'll get your questions and we'll get them on the air. And we'll say your name and give you a plug if you want to, too. So give us a message if you have any topics that you want us to cover. Ladies, it's been a pleasure I hope that you guys enjoy the rest of your day, this beautiful day um, here. We have um, in New Mexico sunshine. Uh, Sarah, in Nashville, do you got some sunshine today? Yeah, it's gorgeous. Beautiful. And then, um, Tasha, how about Texas? Got some sunshine? Yeah, it's a great mm-hmm. day today. <laughs> beautiful. I appreciate everybody. Tune in next week, and uh, we'll be here. Take it easy, ladies, and I'll see you next time. I appreciate all of you. Appreciate you. (laughs) You're listening to Third Eye Political Radio, and we really appreciate you joining us. And when you have a moment, why don't you check out our sister station, Heart Over Ego Radio, where we offer a lineup of shows that are guaranteed to raise your vibrations and guide you into your best life. We offer shows on Sundays, Everyday Psychic Radio, Mondays, The Alchemy Sisters, Tuesdays, Radical Spirituality, and on Wednesdays, All for One is Love. And then we close out the week on Fridays with Rain Radio. Amazing shows produced for you five days a week, only on Blog Talk Radio. That's right, it's our sister station, Heart Over Ego Radio. This is Third Eye Political Radio signing out. Downward Dogma. Take it easy.